Hello everybody. So today we're going to be talking about heat engines. And um, you guys have probably heard heat engines being used in everything. But basically what a heat engine does, it just takes heat from a high temperature reservoir, right? And takes that heat, converts some of it into work, and dumps the rest of that heat in a low temperature reservoir, right? And you're hearing me use some terminology like reservoir, right? Um, what Basically what a thermal energy reservoir is, it just, it's... It's a reservoir that we take or dump heat in, right? And we can refer to like a high temperature reservoir as a source and a low temperature reservoir as a sink. These are just things that um, remain unchanged as, as the process is going on. So some characteristics of a reservoir include, um, as I said, the temperature doesn't change, right? So T is constant. And this is because you don't want um, a reservoir changing as the processes are going on. In it. We're going to learn later on that basically when you change the temperature of, of the reservoirs that we're dealing with, it does affect the efficiency of a heat engine. So you don't want this reservoir, the high temperature reservoir, um, getting lower every time, we care, every time we carry out a process and the low temperature reservoir getting higher because we're dumping heat there. They stay the same. Um, when we're dealing with a car, right, a car which um, takes heat, right, it's not going to make the temperature of the atmosphere drop so drastically that we're not able to use um, the reservoir as a high temperature reservoir anymore, right? Um, another characteristic of a reservoir is that it, it's relatively massive. So I just gave the example of the atmosphere, right? The atmosphere is so big that no matter what's going on in the atmosphere, the temperature isn't changing so drastically because of those um, things going on, right? So it's so relatively massive that it's unchanged. Another characteristic is that it has a high heat capacity. And this is sort of saying the same thing, right? Um, if something has a high heat capacity, it takes a lot of energy put into it to be able to change the temperature of it, right? So that's just again saying that the T basically remains the same. Um, some examples of a reservoir could be like the ocean, like I said, the atmosphere. You could even take like a room as an example of a reservoir, right? So these are just things that we need to know about a thermal energy reservoir. Um, now we're gonna talk about a heat engine. Now some characteristics of a heat engine, right? It converts heat to work, right? Um, we take energy from a high temperature reservoir and dump it in a low temperature reservoir. Um, it converts part of this heat energy into work. And it's very important because we don't convert all of the heat um, energy into work. That's not what a heat engine is. A heat engine just does always dump some heat in the low temperature reservoir, right? Um, so they reject heat to a low temperature reservoir. And I'm just gonna write to a sink. That's what we refer to a low temperature reservoir as. Um, it operates on a cycle. So, and we've talked about cycles before, right? A cycle is just basically where the end point is the same as the starting point. Now, heat engines use fluid, right? And the fluid that is used to produce this work is just simply referred to as the working fluid, right? So that's a good thing to keep in mind. But basically, these are the characteristics of a thermal energy reservoir, a source, or a sink, and those are the characteristics of a heat engine. Now, there's some terminology that you're gonna have to be familiar with, right? When we're dealing with um, heat engines. And it's just, it's just good to know these things. So when I mention something that's called Q in, we have to look at everything, or at least what I do, I look at the system as my point, right? So Q in is just heat into the system, right? And likewise, Q out is heat out of the system. Work in is heat done on the system. I mean, it's work done on the system.
and work out is work done by system. Now the way I sort of think of it, right, when the system is doing work, if, if, if I'm doing work, right, let's say I'm trying to push something up, it's, it's I'm doing work pushing that thing up, right? However, if the thing is pushing on me, right, it's doing work on me. So that's sort of the way I, I, I like to imagine it. The system is doing work, right? That's work out. And if work is done on the system, then that's work in, right? Um, also, you need to know what QNet is. Let me write this in green, actually. QNet is simply Q in minus Q out. And work net is simply work out minus work in. And this can be a little bit confusing sometimes, right? But just know that there, this is what QNet is and this is what work net is, right? Now, there are different ways to draw a heat engine. And there's a simplified version and then there's a um, more complex version. And we need to know how, um, how when I'm drawing something, what I'm meaning is going on, right? So basically, this is what the more complex version looks like. There's a boiler, and what happens in a boiler? Things are boiled, right? And the temperatures get hotter, so there's Q in in this boiler. There's also a turbine, right? Well, let me not really say, let me not refer to these as boilers and turbines. Basically, there's, there's something that's, there's a part of it that's producing work. So that's why we draw it like this. I don't know if the correct, the correct um, thing would be to call it a turbine. But basically, there's work net, right? And that's what we refer to it as. It's not, we don't refer to that as work out. We refer to it as work net. And then there's a condenser. And this condenser simply just gets rid of that um, Q. So there's Q out with the condenser. And then there's a pump, right? And actually this is a turbine, I'm sorry. You can refer to this as a turbine. So there's a turbine, there's a condenser, there's a pump, right? And, and, and a pump is basically just a compressor for fluids, right? Um, a compressor generally deals with air, but if you hear me saying like pump, I'm probably talking about water, and I guess in this situation it would be fuel, but this is a pump. And just know that this is a condenser. So what does a condenser have? Work in. And then we're operating on a cycle. So we end up getting this. So this is the more complex way of drawing it. And we don't wanna draw this out every time we're dealing with the heat engine, right? So we have a simplified version. So this is what we use as our source. It's just a big circle. And then this is like the whole heat engine sort of, right? So we're producing work net. And then we have our sink here. And we're operating from taking heat from this source and dumping it on this sink, right? So there's a Q involved, and we refer to this as Q in, and then we refer to this as Q out, right? Because we're taking this in and dumping it here. I guess you could say this is the whole heat engine, and you might be tempted to call this like a turbine. This is actually the whole heat engine, basically. Now, with this, we can see, um, looking at it from, let's say we're looking at it from in to out, right? And we apply this equation to it, or we apply um, what we're seeing there, right? We can say that Q in is equal to work net plus work out, or plus Q out. Now, um, what we can do here, we can do a little bit of algebra and we see that um, we can solve for work net. And then this work, net, and this work net is equal to Q in minus Q out. But what do we know, what else do we know is equal to Q in minus Q out? Q net, right? So we can go ahead and say that work net, 
Let me just write it here. Is equal to QNet. Um, now I've talked about efficiency before, right? And we know what efficiency is. Efficiency is basically desired output over required input. And with a heat engine, our desired output is our work net, and our required input is our QN, right? So our efficiency for a heat engine can be written as, let me write desired output over our required input. We can write this as, I'm going to write it down here, our work net over our QN. And when we do this, right, um, basically this is how I remember it. I remember that the desired output is work net and our required input is QN, right? But we can also solve this um, other ways, right? We can then go on to say that QN minus Q out over QN is our work net, right? I mean, is our efficiency. And then likewise, we can also say one minus Q out over Q in is our efficiency, right? And um, I mean, it's just sort of good to be able to do these things because they might give you some certain things and you're not really able to um, solve, but um, it's good to be able to manipulate this equation to be able to solve for whatever you want. They might just give you Q out and Q in or I mean, just it, it depends on the problem. We'll still do example problems. But basically, that's what you need to know for efficiency. Um, there's also something called the Kelvin Planck equation or Kelvin Planck statement, right, of the second law. And basically, this is good to know. I'm going to leave that up there. This is just good to know for um, if you're ever asked this on an exam. They've asked me this on the exam before. And there are a few things that you need to know when you're talking about the Kelvin Planck statement. So Kelvin Planck statement of the second law. So basically we're sort of just, it's sort of just summing up the second law. And there are a few key points that you should talk about when you're giving, um, they might ask you what is, what is the Kelvin Planck statement. So you need to talk, to talk about how there's a cycle involved, how there's heat involved, how there's work involved, how there's negation involved, and how there is um, Q out, QL, Q out, um, surroundings, I'm just gonna write surround, environment. That says environment. <laughs> but basically, um, you need to involve these things to be able to get full credit on a problem that's talking about the Kelvin Planck statement. So an example of this could be any device that operates on a cycle that converts heat into work cannot do so without expelling some of that heat to the surroundings. That's a good example of the Kelvin Planck statement. You should receive full credit for that, right? Um, let me see what I wrote down. A device that converts heat to work while operating on a cycle while rejecting some of the heat to um, the surroundings is impossible to create. So anything that involves these five points should get you full credit um, on the Kelvin Planck statement. Um, can we avoid rejecting heat? No, that's what a heat engine does. Um, even we're gonna learn about other um, more, in fact, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll do some example problems, but that's what a heat engine does. It expels heat to the environment as well. Um, I believe this is all you need to know about heat engines. You should be pretty well prepared for any problem that they can throw at you with regarding heat engines when you're able to do these things. If you didn't understand anything, please leave comments in the comment section. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends and let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.